Hello there, my fellow loyal battle brothers, and welcome back to your weekly dose of the Space Marine Chapters lore. Today, I took a little initiative and decided to cover another Tier 3 chapter. This chapter is another successor of the Venerable Blood Angels, and is in fact the chapter that got the second most votes in my previous poll. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the Angels Sanguine. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us learn more about them, shall we? The Angels Sanguine are another chapter formed from the Blood Angels Legion when it was divided during the second founding. Like many of their peers, they have served with honor and courage throughout 10,000 years of Imperial history. The chapter is especially honored for its heroic actions defending the regions surrounding the Eye of Terror against the Black Crusades and the Servants of Chaos, and is held in high esteem by most other chapters of the Adeptus Astartes. Despite their proud heritage, there lingers an air of mystery about the Angel Sanguine, that can only be a result of the tragic flaw of all the Blood Angels. The most outwardly distinctive feature of the Angel Sanguine is that none of them ever remove their helmets, nor reveal their faces in the presence of anyone not of the chapter. Even among their own kind, whether of their own chapter or others of the line of Sanguinius, they obscure their features beneath monkish hoods. Exactly why this should be the case has never been determined by an outsider and, as a result, the chapter's battle brothers are regarded with a measure of dread by most they encounter. What might lie beneath their helmets and hoods, no one can say. Perhaps they are afflicted by some physical mutation linked to the flaw, or maybe they simply choose to obscure their faces as a kind of penance. Furthermore, a number of dark tales have emerged regarding the chapter's fortress monastery most of which concern the dark catacombs set to lie beneath it. Their terrible secret, called the Red First, is that Angel Sanguine Marines develop an overwhelming physiological need to drink blood because of the mutation of their genes aid, a not uncommon problem for the heirs of Sanguinius. Despite this flaw, they have a long and glorious history of service to the Imperium of Man. The Angel Sanguine have been active in the Jericho Reach since at least 791 M41, when a detachment of the chapter's first company arrived unannounced through the Jericho Maw Warp Gate, and attached itself to a large force of Angels Vermilion, a fellow Blood Angel successor chapter. The Angels Vermilion were engaged upon a mission deep into the chaos held systems surrounding the Hadex Anomaly a mission launched at the behest of the Master of the Vigil, Watch Commander Mordegale. It appears that this combined force had as its target an individual Chaos Warlord, and that the mission was a matter of chapter business and had nothing to do with the Death Watch's mission in the Jericho Rage. The mission was not debated in the Chamber of Vigilance of Watch Fortress Ariok nor were any accounts of it shared with the Ordos of the Inquisition or even the High Command of the Achilles Crusade. Concerned by this strange turn of events, an ad hoc conclave of Inquisitors, based in the Tower of Brass of Watch Fortress Ariok, determined to discover something of what had occurred, and in so doing setting themselves against the Master of the Vigil. Though it cost them the lives of several of their most valued followers, the Inquisitors discovered one single key piece of information regarding the mission. Its target was a warlord last seen three centuries before, in the vicinity of the Screaming Vortex. The Renegade had not been seen since, but his sudden reappearance in the Jericho Reach had clearly been of great import to the Watch Commander. The reason for this, and the involvement of the Angel Sanguine, was hinted at when Inquisitors discovered the title the Warlord was now operating under, Lazareth the Faceless. The prying Inquisitors would never have the opportunity to disseminate their discovery, for over the course of the days and weeks, following the Watch Commander's return to Watch Fortress Ariok, each one seems to have disappeared, or met with an unfortunate end. 
Of those inquisitors whose bodies were found, one was discovered frozen solid in the airless ice chambers of the hunting grounds, a section of the watch station given over to training in arduous environments. Another was discovered floating in the void, a chilling expression of terror etched onto his face. The body of a third was found, exsanguinated, at the base of the Tower of Brass, sprawled in plain view as if in dire warning. Several of the Angel Sanguine took the Apocryphon Oath and stank the Long Watch to this very day. Other notable campaigns of theirs include The War of Broken Wings, 261 M33 An armada of vessels drawn from the Night Lord's Traitor Legion and its myriad allies assaulted the Angel Sanguine battle fleet in high orbit above the world of Anzira. The Angel Sanguine, fighting for their homeworld and the very survival of the chapter, were pressed into a defensive battle to prevent mass bombardment of their fortress monastery. To end this engagement, which records list as several days of protracted war and boarding actions, the Angel Sanguine forced a final resolution by offering the perfect bait. They allowed their flagship, the Cruor Domina, to be crippled and boarded by several hundred traitor marines. While the space marines defended their battle barge to keep it from being taken as a prize by the Night Lords, a full 300 Death Company Astartes were sent by boarding torpedoes to slaughter their way through the vulnerable crews of eight enemy capital ships. The Angels Sanguine have always suffered fiercely from the flaw and such an assault represented a century's worth of prisoners within their monastery's Tower of the Lost being unleashed into battle one last time. Without any chaplains to lead them, the death companies were sacrificed in desperation, with no hope of recovery. But, however, it did turn the tide. Suddenly, at risk of losing many of their own flagships, the traitor warbands fought their way back to their own vessels, only to be cut down by the enraged defenders as they turned their backs and fled. Those traitors that did manage to return to their own ships were met with entire decks left as abattoirs by the rampaging death companies. They were forced to contend with the blood-maddened boarding parties, even as they ordered their ships back from the primary assault. Task Force Iscon, 721 M41 Captain Iskon of the Angel Sanguine chapter led a mixed strike unit drawn from his own and several other chapters against Eldar Corsairs plaguing the mining world of Volen. At the height of the campaign, Iskon cornered and killed the Corsair Prince Nihilus the Ardent, in an epic duel that has since become legend. The Vandred Atrocity, 864-M41 Dark Eldar Archon Tisk led his cabal of the Bloody Storm against Vandred, a feudal world from which the Angel Sanguine chapter recruited new aspirants. Sure enough, a strike force of Angel Sanguine made Planetfall within only days, yet they were only playing into the Archon's hands. Tisk released a blood plague acquired at great cost from the Haemunculi Coven of the Altered a virus tapping directly into the tragic gene curse of the Sons of Sanguinius. Aware of their madness, but unable to stop, the Angel Sanguine butchered and devoured those they came to protect, before falling upon each other, while the Dark Eldar drank in the agony, terror, and despair. The Angel Sanguine fielded seven companies in support of the defense of the Cadian Gate from Abaddon the Despoiler in the 13th Black Crusade. They also were among the Blood Angel successor chapters participating in the defense of the Blood Angel's homeworld, from the assault of High Fleet Leviathan. Last but not least, the Red Scar campaign. Hurled across the void by an empiric convulsion, a Tau colonization fleet began claiming worlds within the Red Scar. Their efforts were brought to a sudden violent halt by strike forces of Blood Angels, Flesh Terrors, and the Angel Sanguine. The planets of the Sundry and Gendal's Reach were swiftly reclaimed for the Imperium, and then the war spilled into the Seven Suns system. Some well-known members of the chapter include 
Lord Sentecon is the current chapter master. Captain Boldus was a captain of the Angel Sanguine who accompanied the forces sent by the chapter to aid the Blood Angels during the devastation of Baal. High Chaplain Servius was the very first High Chaplain of the Angel Sanguine. Librarian Ashok. This guy is a member of the chapter who is currently seconded to the Death Watch. Before his secondment, Ashok served in a campaign against the Tyranids on the planet of Hegelian 9. Deployed with his chapter's death company into the subterranean catacombs in pursuit of the fleeing Xenos, he and his fellow comrades finally succumbed to the terrible effects of the Black Rage. This resulted in the company taking out their savagery among each other. Ashok's hand was forced to kill three of his own brothers before he finally managed to control the effects of his Jane Seed's flaw. After finally emerging from this nightmarish event, Ashok was presented with the Shroud of Lamartes, a symbolic cloak given to those angel sanguine as a symbol of their mastery over the Black Rage. Although Ashok had successfully managed to deal with the flaw's effects, he would have to remain eternally vigilant in combating the signs. Shortly afterwards, he was seconded to the illustrious Death Watch. Ashok later deployed with a Death Watch kill team under the command of Inquisitor Calypsia in order to deal with a splinter high fleet on the world of Herodian IV. During this campaign, Ashok became the first recorded librarian in history to take on three Tyranid zoanthropes and live. It is said that Ashok is also unique in that he is the one of very few space marines to dislike wearing power armor and senses that its machine spirit is not fond of him either. A few sacred relics of the chapter include The Grail of Angels This is a holy relic of the Angel Sanguine, a blood chalice that is possessed by its sanguinary high priest. When the high priest initiates neophytes into the chapter, they must drink his blood from the Grail of Angels and in doing so, they partake in the essence of the Primarch Sanguinius himself. The Mask of the Watcher This is an artificer helmet forged in the shape of a golden death mask of the Angel Sanguine beloved Primarch. Legends of Sanguinius sometimes tell of his powers of prophecy and divination. This power is supposedly latent in all the Blood Angels by virtue of the psychic imprint he left upon their gene seed usually and unfortunately manifesting as the visions leading to the Black Rage. However, it can sometimes be harnessed for better ends, and the advanced Psi circuitry embedded in the impassive golden face of the Watcher's mask allow the Sons of Sanguinius to draw on extraordinary insight. The Shroud of Servius this is a relic that is named in the honor of Servius, the chapter's first sanguinary high priest, and remains in the possession of each Astartes in turn to hold that rank. The shroud holds such power that when it is worn by a sanguinary high priest, it grants him the psychological authority to stop even the rampages of the Death Company. The Tablet of Lestralio this is used to restrain Angel Sanguine who have entered the Black Rage. It is named after Chaplain Lestralio of the Blood Angels, who designed and later died on the very tablet. Members who emerge from their time on the tablet and have regained mastery of their psyches are presented with another special item known as the Shroud of Lamartes, as a symbol of their newfound inner strength. The Angel Sanguine's power armor is halved red and black, with a yellow Imperialis symbol on the chestplate. The white squad specialty symbol is indicated on the right shoulder guard. A black Logothic numeral centered in the middle of the squad specialty symbol indicates squad number. The company number is indicated on the right knee guard in accordance to the heraldry used by the Blood Angels. Their chapter badge is a large white skull centered on a pair of red wings on a field of black. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the Angel Sanguine chapter of Space Marines for today. Are these guys among your favorite chapters? 
Have you ever fought with them or against them? What do you like or dislike most about them? Feel free to share any thoughts and opinions on them in the comments below. Was the video informative or entertaining? In that case, please click the like button and subscribe for future content. Thank you very much for watching to the end, and I wish you all a very peaceful day. The Emperor Protects